Danger, we're entering a volcanic area. As you walk down the stone pathway, you can only stand in awe at the sheer size of this crater. The Santiago crater spews out sulfur fumes deep from within its core. The sulfur haze is so thick, you can hardly see through it. Or even down into the crater for that matter. Santiago Park Ranger Juan Rodrigo tells us about the crater and its history. Here we have the crater Santiago, that finished forming in the year 1902. Internally it contains lava at 1050 degrees Celsius. Here on the entire complex is being fueled just like the volcano Indiri. This one in particular is being fueled by three craters of lava. All volcano activities affect each other and occur at the same time. The crater San Pedro and the crater Santiago are two volcanoes that are situated in the outer skirts of the actual crater formed by the volcano Endiri. The crater San Pedro was formed in the year 1852 and followed by the formation of crater Santiago in the year 1859. From these two craters, only Santiago crater has remained active since the year 1902. Since that date until now, there has been ongoing activity inside the volcano. The level of lava often fluctuates up and down, but never showed any signs for an eruption. This crater here is surrounded by another crater, then an inner crater, and also protected by a magma chamber. The magma chamber reads to have a temperature of 1,050 degrees Celsius, and the depth of lava right now is approximately 1,500 meters. The entire internal part of the crater is formed by walls of sulfur and the lava contains a viscous material and this material is very typical and is well known in the islands of Hawaii. This only tells us that the lava rises within the internal part of the volcano and then descends back down to the volcano's conductor. It has a, di it has a diameter of 360 meters times 580 meters and the depth of its actual crater is another 180 meters of depth. It is also said that during the pre-Columbian era, the volcano was the main active volcano, and it is said that rituals and ceremonies of women sacrificing and children sacrificing were performed at the feet of this volcano, and volcanoes Indiri and Messiah. In 1529, Francisco de Bobadilla made a cross and placed it up there where we now see an exact replica of Bobadilla's cross. This cross served as a reminder that here at this pit of lava was the entrance to hell and that whoever lived in it was the demon. Thus the cross is placed there to expel the demon. In the year 1535, another priest who lived in the city of Leon said that there was gold inside the volcano and attempted to blow up the internal part of the volcano in order to extract gold, but no gold ever existed. Instead of gold, the material he retrieved was a burnt black surface of a stone that has no value. Therefore, even until now, many years after, there are literatures that talk about other various Spanish explorers who would request for permission from the kings of Spain to blow up the volcano and take the gold. This crater, the crater Santiago, has an ongoing volcanic activity during the entire time. It's producing sulfuric acidic acids, and these gases are toxic and can contaminate the environment. These gases are harmful to the human body. It affects the person's health, harms the respiratory system and the lungs. It can affect human eyes by the acidic rains, which is formed throughout the winter and is basically ongoing activity governed by the volcano. Now, during the winter season, the internal activities of the volcano is different than the activities of those of the summer. 
In the summer, the gas is forming a plume and expelling the gas, just like how we see it right now with the gas surrounding the area of the volcano. When it's colder, there are more evaporation, and that creates more gases. On a regular basis, one can observe the evaporations of the crater Santiago, San Pedro, and Emiri. But for now, you can only see a wall formed by the gases from the Santiago crater. Here on our left is the volcano Masaya. This volcano is the one that had most recent eruption and it happened on March 16, 1772. Here on our left is the volcano Masaya. This volcano is the one that had a most recent eruption and it happened on March 16 in the year 1772. It's when the volcano erupted and started to spit out lava towards the northern region. The volcano's eruption is known as the most famous one, where the lava has traveled as far as 11 kilometers towards the northern region. Historically, there has been an old Indian town where people lived and was destroyed by the lava. Thus, until this very day, this date has been commemorated to the native people of Indiri. Therefore, there is a tradition where the people would make pilgrimage with the image of the Virgin Mary and pray for the volcano's eruption to calm down. There is a point in between Managua and Messiah that the land is topographically higher, and it is believed that this is where the lava had hit and got deviated towards the Messiah. Scientifically, this is the only logical explanation of how the city was not completely destroyed. It is said that it was from the Virgin's blessing and protection that deviated the lava flow and protected their city. Until this very day, every year on the 16th of March in this town, there is a huge celebration of salvation of the city of Indiri. There is this part on the inside of the crater of the volcano called San Juan that sets 635 meters of altitude above sea level. This crater is completely inactive and with growing vegetation. The part of the Masaya crater is only a part of the entire volcano activity, but it is said that it could be from a recurrence that was completely different than that of volcanic activity. It is believed that there is a filtration of water between the part of the lagoon and the part of the volcano perimeter, and it is also part of where the gases are released from the water has been filtered. Everything including the border of the volcano is about 54 kilometers squared. This 54 kilometers squared includes the Messiah Lagoon, which is 6 kilometers long and 1.5 kilometers wide. This is the active area of the volcano. The activity here is completely normal with no interference from having the lagoon on one side and on the other side having the boiling lava. This is a panoramic view of the crater San Pedro. It's a crater with 200 meters of depth and is completely inactive. Una plataforma de arena completamente inactivo. On the left, we can see the crater Indiri with the surface covered with sand. This started to collapse during the years 1852 to 1859. With time, it formed the crater San Pedro and Santiago. In due time, this basically left a plain sand that is all parts of the Indiri volcano complex. As sure as comes the night, comes the next morning.